you there? I am. Okay, good. This is Catherine. Good, good morning. morning to you. And you can tell me the first two hymns. <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> Uh, uh, it is, um, Lord, I want to be a Christian 402. Okay. Okay. Good. I got that one. I got it right. Break thou the bread of life. 599. Okay. That was the one I wrote it down. My house is such a mess. I don't know where anything is. And the last one is find us together. Yes. <laughs> no, no. The last one. The last one. The last one. This is 577, blessed be the tie that binds. Versus okay, one you. in four. One in four only. Okay, tell me the number again. 557. Five, 557, five, 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 one in four. Yeah. Okay, it was a contest between one or the other. Well, we would have been <laughs> fine with either one you chose. Well, We'd make it work. <laughs> yeah, no, and but not out, of, not out of the blue. Yeah, and the, it would be such a mess. Hmm? No, I was saying it would be great. Medicine. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, okay. And if you would and if you would just verbally guide us um through the program so that um all of us, even the people on the phone, will know what order we're coming in. Who, me? No. Oops. Yeah. I'm sorry. Our liturgist, our worship leader. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Thank you. Oh, okay. No problem. I, got gotcha you covered, Pastor. I didn't, know, gotcha covered. I didn't know which Catherine you meant. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, I just saw your text. I forwarded it to you. <laughs> Bless the Lord, oh my soul. <laughs> All right, my watch says 10 o'clock right on the button. So I think that I'm going to welcome everyone to worship at Emmanuel United Methodist Church here in Beltsville or from wherever you are worshiping with us today. I hope that this morning, this beautiful morning finds you well uh, and safe and full of the joy of the Lord. Um, we're going to start out our service this morning with our joys and concerns. Oh, and kittens running across my shoulder. Sorry. <laughs> um, they will fly through the screen with the greatest of ease. Uh, so if they get too rambunctious, I will move. But, but let us start off with our joys and concerns this morning, the things that uh, you would have us pray for this week. I, I would like to start off and just pray for all the people around this country and for their safety and their wisdom and um, their courage during these seemingly returning to dark days of the COVID virus and the several variants that are come out, especially as our, our children are returning to school in some states that either are not requiring masks for students or have legislatively uh, banned uh, safety precautions for schools to put in place for the children and for the young people in colleges. So I'd like to, to put that out for everyone's prayers. I know it's been on all of our minds. Yes. Are there yes. any other, any, any joys and, and concerns this morning from those of you? We have gotten a message from um, Kimberly Beach, who is a former member. Her husband is in the ICU in Florida. He had a heart attack and he also has pneumonia and COVID. Um, mm. This is not the first time he's had heart issues. So no. keep the Beach uh, family, uh, Brian Beach is his name. So keep the Beach family in your name and your prayers. Hey, Red, this is Linda. Um, we just saw on Facebook that he passed away. Oh, oh no. At 941. Oh, no. Oh. And they have a young child. I don't know how old that little boy is, but he can't be more than 10 or 12. Uh, he's going into sixth grade. So, yeah. Oh, so he's about 11. Yeah. Well, we'll lift up Kim and their son and, and uh, all the, the people that knew and loved him. Are there others? Yes, uh, I got two. 
one uh, we'd like to you still to be remembering our son Joshua. We're just we're just concerned about his well being, his well being, his overall well being. You know, it's it's not one particular thing, and he's he's just trying to be reclusive. So he's he is being reclusive. Uh, that's our concern, but. I have somebody that's on a, a different board. We're on a board of a Friends of Crab Orchard Refuge, it's National Refuge, and we have a, our eldest member. She's 93, I believe. She had a fall this week. Um, she has uh, deteriorating bones, and her pelvis cracked and could not support her. Her name is Rose, Rosemary, but she goes by Rose, Rose Howerton. She, a uh, real pace setter, as a person, she worked for the Bureau of Prisons as an auditor in a man's world. And so she's 93 now. So she was doing this a long time ago. Uh, she is really a very diligent, heartfelt person, a Christian. Um, so please pray for Rose and, and her, the remainder of her life that it'd be strong and it'd be blessed. She's been a blessing to a lot of people and she's really good for our, our group. So. Rose Howerton, thank you. Thank you very much, we will lift her up. I would also like to say what a blessing that the two of you have been to us in, in since you've been able to tune in with us on Zoom and, and how you continue to just be, just be a great addition to our Emmanuel family. And I thank you for that. I, um, it, it means a lot to us. So thank you, you're, you're a joy to us. Thank you very much. It's our pleasure, honestly. You're all we're we're so glad to have found you all. You're an oasis to us, so we appreciate it. Thank you. Are there others? Ryan. Hey, good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, so I have, I'll say joys. Um, number one joy, uh, Levi continuing his growth and losing another tooth. Wow. Unfortunately, the baby teeth that he's supposed to lose, not the ones that he's not supposed to lose. It's all good there. Um, second joy, yesterday we took Theodore, who's deciding whether he wants to get on camera. Here he comes. There he is. <laughs> Hi, Theo. Theo. Theo, Levi, my mom, Della, and I, we all went down to the aquarium. Um, so that Theo could see, well, all the aquatic animals and um, marshland creatures. Um, and that was really good. He enjoyed that. Um, today, again, the joy train is keep running. Um, today, we're going to be going to um, their granddad's house because his birthday is this week. Um, so three big joys right in a row. Um, I also have some concerns. Um, there's some travel that Della has to... Um, be a part of this week and also my mom. So praying for them and their safety um, in this time of a resurgence of a pandemic and a resurgence of this virus, praying that God stays present in all the places that they're in, in and at. And that to your other prayer, Kathy, that everybody keeps their brain in their heads and a takes this seriously and uses the appropriate precautions so that everyone can come back home safely. Um, and yeah, those are the, the big ones for me this week. Thank you, Abel. Hey, Kath, I have a quick one. Yeah, Grant. Okay, so I just want everybody to know that we're very excited because we're gonna take our goats to the Montgomery County Agricultural Fair Saturday. So next week, we will be there every day and it's very fun. And if you've never been, it's a great fair. And it's like a time step back in time with all the animals that are there. And we're very excited to do that. Um, so just wanted to share that. And we're also having fun because we're going to bake things this year and enter that. So uh, that's our fun for this week. So thank you for that. <laughs> you all can laugh. I know. It's OK. Go ahead. <laughs> but it's a joy that's keeping things something new and different so that our brains don't turn to mush. I think we have to do that in this time of, of COVID. It's uh, real important that everyone find, find things to liven up their, their, their lives. Are there other concerns or joys? Uh, yes, Kathy. Hi, I, Kathy. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, absolutely. Um, Thank you. For, first of all, 
Don't laugh at goats. Goats are cool. Um, <laughs> we think I so. Thought they were they were wonderful little animals. But uh, I had a joy yesterday. The Galloways had their annual um, shrimp boil and crab fest, compliments of Doug's brother, Paul. And uh, we they had families from uh, Texas, Arkansas. I can't remember. Oh, Georgia. I can't remember where everybody was from. But we had a great time, and there were lots of new little Galloways that I had not seen. And uh, probably be the one of the last times I'll ever be able to get together with them. So that was a great thing for me. And today is my last Sunday at Emmanuel, and it's it's been 40 wonderful years. And I'll miss everybody, but I'm looking forward to my new adventure in Waxhaw, which nobody ever heard of. Well, we we thank you for the all that you have done for Emmanuel over the years, Catherine, and, and wish you nothing but health and happiness in your next chapter uh, in your life. And, and you will be missed very, very much. Thank you. I want to lift up something that came in the chat from Sonia, uh, a friend, Mark Anthony Sanchez, who's in the hospital and on oxygen support and has COVID. So um, prayers for Mark Anthony Sanchez. Are there any others? Yes, Kathy. Hi, this is Judy. Hi, uh, Judy. My, hi. I have a like a, a concern and a um, and a good uh, something good. My daughter's oldest child is going to college this week. They're taking her down to University of Tennessee on Friday, and I'm just. Uh, I'm happy that she's going to college, but a little concerned about how far she's going to be. And their family has always been really close. The three teenagers still like to do things with their parents. They went up to Hershey Park yesterday and spent the day. So I think they're trying to get as much family time in before she leaves. And I know my daughter is going to cry all the way home from Tennessee because it is her first one but it, it's it's exciting for her she's looking forward to going but her boyfriend is going to up by Albany Rochester to his uh he starts tomorrow so I think it's going to be a uh, a little bit of a change for the two of them that they won't be able to see each other so uh I hope everything works out and thank you everyone for your prayers hope you're doing better now, Judy. I am feeling really good. Yes, my hip is totally healed and my pelvis and I'm getting around and I started walking this week. So trying to build up my walking endurance and uh, I might go to the beach this week. I'm still trying to decide if what? I'm going or not, but that'll be good for my soul. So yes, thank you for asking. Excellent. That's great. Yeah. And prayers for others who are recuperating from surgery, from falls and broken bones and prayers for all the rest of us that we don't fall and break bones uh, right now. So prayers for healing for those among us who are in the recuperation process. Are there any others this morning? All right, thank you. Pastor? Okay, let us go to the Lord in prayer. God, we just come pleading the blood of Jesus over each and every person assembled on this Zoom call, whether they're on the telephone, whether they're uh, joining us by video, or even if they hear this in another setting at another time. The prayers that we pray this day to you, we know are not time limited. We thank you, Lord God, for your servants who have come to give both praise and to ask prayer. We pray for the, everyone in this country and in others for safety and wisdom as we encounter a new uh, iteration of the COVID virus. We ask, oh God, for the safety of the children, especially going back to school and the young people going to college. We ask, oh God, that you would guide those in authority to have wisdom and take care and use reason in exercising 
what is good and beneficial for all those involved. We thank you, Lord God, for your servant, Kimberly. And we ask that you would embrace her now with the assurance that her husband, Brian, though he has passed away from this realm of existence, he has transitioned into your arms. For the word says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And God, as they go through this undoubtedly unexpected turn of life events, comfort Kimberly and their son. Comfort them by your divine spirit, your strength, and let the prayers of all the people who care for them continue to usher them through this difficult time and situation. We thank you, Lord God, for how you are at work in protecting and comforting and ministering to your servant, Josh. We, Lord God, lift up his well-being and where he is, oh God, he may be in a solitary situation, but he is not alone. Lord God, we know that you are with him. You will never leave him nor forsake him. Guide him by your divine spirit, Lord God, and speak to him in a clear and present voice so that he may know your will for his life. You have not given him a spirit of fear. You have not given him a spirit of depression. Speak to him, Lord God, and, and remind him that he is a joy to you and let your spirit be a joy to him. We pray, Lord God, also for your servant, Rose. We thank you, Lord God, that she is resilient even at 93 years old, that she has broken her bones, oh God, but we believe that you will do like you have done for your servant, Judy, that you will restore her hip, you restore her pelvis, that you will give her strength, and that she would be able to walk again and enjoy the latter years of her life, and we want to give you praise for it in advance, knowing that you are already at work in this situation. We thank you, Lord God, for the white cottons. Hallelujah, how they have been a blessing to the Emmanuel family. We ask that you would bless their family in whatever area they may have need and that they are reminded that as they touch and agree in prayer, our Father in heaven shall bring it up to pass in accordance with the word of God. We thank you, Lord God, also for the Martin family. We thank you, Lord God, for Levi, who is growing and who is improving every day. We thank you, Lord God, for missing teeth and that bring forth new teeth. And we thank you, God, for little brother Theo, who is having a fine example in big brother Levi to follow. And we thank you that they had a successful trip to the aquarium and we pray for Adela's trip um, and her mother-in-law is traveling also as they have to venture into other areas. We ask that you would grant them traveling mercies, safety and protection and let them all celebrate well at granddad's birthday party. And we thank you for how you are keeping Lord them and every one of us in a measure of reason, instill all of us, all of us, no matter where we may be in terms of our thinking, let us have wisdom in dealing with this COVID virus. We thank you, Lord God, for goats and baked goods <laughs> and all things wonderful that appear at the agricultural fair. We thank you, Lord God, because as it was said earlier, goats are good. Even they use the term go to be greatest of all time. So goats indeed are good. And we ask your blessings upon the events at the fair and that all who attend would have a joyous, memorable and safe occasion there this year. We thank you, Lord God, for the Galloways. We thank you, Lord God, for their annual shrimp boil, their gathering as a family. And each and every time we gather as family, we create memories. We thank you, Lord God, that you have allowed Catherine to make this connection. She does not know the next time that she will see all of them together in one place at one time. But we thank you, Lord God, that she's been given this opportunity before she moves to Wax Hall and we lose her even from our family. We thank you for each and every gathering she has been a part of for this 
past 40 years. And thank you, Lord God, for allowing me to know of her before she departs our presence. We thank you, Lord God, for her next chapter, her next musical movement. We thank you, Lord God, for what you have in store for her in North Carolina. We thank you, God, for Judy's uh, granddaughter going to college. We pray a hedge of protection around her. We pray that no hurt, harm, or danger would come to her and that she would display wisdom and she would use, Lord God, the guidance that her mother and her or just her parents and grandparents in general have given to her, Lord God. Let her enjoy the college experience and let her know that although her boyfriend is going to another place to um, school, they still can continue to be friends across the miles and learn each other better in a different situation. And Lord God, help them both to mature into the people that you want them to be and give Judy's daughter comfort as she does shed tears to be losing her first, her oldest child to another level of living. Give her the comfort and the assurance that everything will be all right. We thank you, Lord God, for people who are just recuperating in general. We thank you, Lord God, for how you are doing a miracle work. And we marvel even as we know from experience, many of us, that as things are broken or cut, that you miraculously knit things together and put them back in right order. And for this, Lord God, and for every broken heart, for every broken spirit, we ask that you would heal, restore, and help each and every one who needs a healing, a, a form of recuperation in any way, that you would do this miracle work in them. And for this, we give you praise and thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All right, thank you very much, Pastor. And, and there was one additional prayer request that I'll lift up for uh, all of those to put in your prayers this week is Chris is having surgery on Friday. And so if we can surround her in prayer this week in preparation and to pray for her doctors as she moves to surgery on Friday. And also, um, I neglected to say it, I, let me call him by name, and we pray also for Mark Anthony Santos as he recuperates from his situation with COVID, and may he have more oxygen in his lungs. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And so we will move now into the time for our young people to check in with our pastor. So I know that we have Theo and uh, Levi. Do we have other children? Hi, Hi guys. Hi. Hi, guys. How are you doing? How are you doing? Good. Good, good, good. You know, um, I want to ask, ask you guys if you know a song. And song, depending on where you grew up and how you heard it, it goes like patty cake. Patty cake, baker's man, make me a cake as fast as you can. Have you ever heard that song before? Yes. Let me hear it. Let me hear your version of it. How would you sing it, Levi? Patty cake, patty cake, baker's man, make me a cake as fast as you can. Add it a bowl of smoggy little bee, and put it in the oven for baby and bee. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, why I thought about that psalm, because in one of the scripture passages um, that we were reading this week, it was talking about um, uh, Elijah or a prophet that went into an area and God made a cake for this prophet to eat. And I was thinking to myself, I, I wonder what kind of cake it was. And then I started thinking about that song, patty cake, patty cake. Like when you think about patty cake, don't you kind of wonder what kind of cake they were singing about? Yeah. What kind of cake do you think they were thinking about? 
What kind of cake? What kind of cake were they making, Levi? Well, it was vanilla. It was vanilla. That's good. What about Theo? Theo, you think <laughs> you have an idea what kind of cake it might be? No, I was talking about something else. No, Theo, Theo's um, out of the room at this point. <laughs> you, you've got oh, really so Levi sorry. here. So sorry. I, so I think Theo would like chocolate, though. <laughs> okay, but maybe the chocolate cake. And then I thought, well, gosh, I was saying, if it wasn't a pancake, you know, was it a biscuit? It could have been so many different kinds of cake. You know, everybody doesn't like the same kind of cake, right? Because, you know, you like chocolate. You like, some people like vanilla. Some people like fruit cake. Some people don't. <laughs> but it, it's all kinds of cakes that are, op, that are out there that we could think of. What are you thinking about, Levi? That it could be when you sing that song, Patty Cake, just like when God made a special cake for the prophet, and probably was a cake that the prophet would like to eat, right? So if 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 God does something special for us, or even if we went to the baker and wanted a special cake, we would want a cake that we would like to eat, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the cake could be so many kinds of cakes and and it could be so many different things that we don't even have to put a limit on what kind of cake it could be so i saw a, i saw a special um uh song i saw the same you know the song patty cake that we were just singing i saw a song and i saw how they kind of demonstrated that even though you know the baker is making a cake it could be a different kind of cake it doesn't have to be the same cake for everybody just like you may like something different, you may want something different, you can still have cake and still have something that you want that may be different from what somebody else wants and it's still cake. Right? Yay. Yeah, so we can still want different things and still be individually blessed in what we receive. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so we're going to um, show a little video. Mr. Rick is going to show us. Huh? It's going to show us a little video. And I, I just love this version of the song. And watch. And I just want you to watch it. OK? OK. OK. All right. Here we go, I think. cake, pat a cake, baker's man. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. Roll it and pat it and mark it with a C. Put it in the oven for Carlos and me. Pat a cake, pat a cake, baker's man. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. Roll it and pat it and mark it with an A. Put it in the oven for Amy and me. As you can roll it and pat it and mark it with a K. Put it in the oven for Kayla and me. Pat a cake, pat a cake, baker's man. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. Roll it and pat it and mark it with an E. Put it in the oven for Evan and me. All right, thank you, thank you. 
Uh, we're going to ask Catherine to lead us in our hymn, number 402, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian. Catherine? Okay. All right. And these are all verses? Yes. Thank you, Catherine. And now I would like to call upon the White Cotton family to, uh, for our congregational prayer, followed by our scripture reading for the day. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come to worship you confessing our faith before others and confirming it in acts of affirmation. Hear our prayers and our praise through our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from 1 Kings 19, 4 through 8. Uh, the he in the reference here is, of course, to the prophet Elijah. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, 
get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. The second reading from John chapter 6, verse 35 and 41 through 51. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. At this, the Jews there began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. And here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. And now we will move into a time of remembering our tithes and offerings. We've provided several different opportunities for you to continue to give to the life of the church. We're not gathering in person, but we still value and need desperately your your tithes and offerings and encourage you to remember, Emmanuel. You can either mail your check to the office or you can uh, pay online and the link is on our website. Let us pray. Patient and merciful God, we hear your call to live in love as Christ loved you and gave himself up for us. Our ears hear these words in our worship. Our minds know what they mean. Our hearts long to follow them, but we know that tomorrow we will be tempted to slip into the familiar life where we ourselves are at the center of our world and the needs we focus on are almost entirely our own. In our giving this day, help us strengthen our resolve to love as Christ loves us, for it is in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray, amen. And now I'll call upon Catherine to lead us in our hymn of preparation, number 599 in our hymnal, Break Thou the Bread of Life. Catherine? Okay.
Pastor? It's, it's oh, it's a, a technical glitch. I'm sorry. Not it's, a it's problem. A, it's a it's a Rick. <laughs> it's a Rick this time. Okay. Do I need to pull out the transcript? No, I think we'll get it. Give me a second. Okay. All right, I think I figured out what I screwed up. I was digging through the recycle bin just now. Oh, see if I had to pull up my strip. It's amazing when one little <laughs> box is not checked, how much it can mess things up. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for, for your preached word that you have imparted to your servant. May, may it be fresh bread from heaven this day to nourish your people. Now, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable unto you. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. When you think of breadcrumbs, what does that conjure up in your mind? If you are a foodie, it could make you think of panko or bread from topping. If you are a techie, it could make you think of SEO friendly websites. If you are a kid, it could make you think of Hansel und Gretel. If you are a Christian, it could even make you think of Jesus. Throughout the Bible, God has been a provider of bread and bread is mentioned in one form or another as many as 500 times in scripture. Some of the more generally familiar passages Referring to bread are found in the, the stories of the Exodus when unleavened bread was used in the Passover and when God provided manna for the Israelites when they traveled in the desert. Jesus used bread to feed thousands of people miraculously. The people in John chapter 6, the crowd who were with Jesus, would have been culturally and historically acquainted with both the Passover bread and the bread sent from heaven by God, a.k.a. manna. Additionally, most, if not all of his followers in the crowd were likely afforded the opportunity to be partakers of bread with Jesus, not only in the traditional religious events of sharing bread, but also on occasions when Jesus taught since Jesus made it a priority to feed people before he preached to them, and not to mention the many fish sandwiches that were distributed when Jesus multiplied the two fish and five loaves. In fact, because they had been fed by him is one of the reasons they may have been following him to begin with. Much like Hansel and Gretel, who laid a trail of breadcrumbs, the birds followed them so that the birds could eat. Speaking of birds, a sweet lady at my first ministerial appointment used to have a term for people who were like those birds. She called them buzzard Christians, which, <laughs> which meant the birds are the kind of folk that show up to any church event, especially at funerals, 
where they calculated food would be served, she'd say, they'd circle the area going from church to church, just like a bunch of buzzards. No birds of any kind had the luxury of eating the bread after one of Jesus's miracle feedings of thousands because Jesus directed the disciples to collect the breadcrumbs, portions of broken bread, substantial enough to fill 12 baskets after the crowd had had their fill. That's why when Jesus says first to them, I am the bread of life, Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. They seem to be okay with that because this man has been their bread and butter for several meals. Not until Jesus says, I am the bread that came down from heaven, did the Jews begin to complain about him. At this point, they recognize that Jesus is making a spiritual connection to the physical bread, and they are both offended and confused. The scripture reveals to us that those in the crowd are Jews, and they have a historical and cultural understanding of bread in terms of the manna that came down from heaven. What they don't have is the capacity to make the jump from the manna giving God to the miracle working Jesus. Then they begin to say, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Notice how quickly they begin to dissociate the miracles they have already experienced by the rationalization that this Jesus cannot possibly be who he says he is because we know him to be an ordinary man. Those in the crowd who are dissenters to Jesus's revelation are making a specific point of whose Jesus father is. Jesus then counters their point by saying to them not to complain among themselves. And Jesus flatly states, no one comes to me unless drawn by the father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. Jesus is very clear in identifying that his father is in heaven. The one who sent the bread from heaven which sustained the Israelites after they wandered in the wilderness after escaping the enslavement by the Egyptians. <laughs> While you guys are trying to drag Joseph's name into this and drag my name into the mud, let's cease and desist from all arguments. Those of you who are called to follow me have been drawn by my father in heaven. Those of you who have doubt, complaints, criticism, and confusion have been drawn by the natural bread. Jesus begins to <clears throat> teach them in accordance to authority of the Hebrew scriptures, expounding upon the text. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. When Jesus declares, I am the bread of life, he is conveying that he is the necessary sustenance, the sustainer and provider of eternal life, the spiritual life that extends beyond the natural life. More than that, Jesus is the fulfillment of the prophetic words of the Old Testament. Jesus explains that the original bread sent from heaven was manna and was meant to sustain your ancestors until they journey to the promised land. After your Jewish ancestors ate the manna, they died. However, this bread is the person of Jesus Christ. 
is the bread that comes from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. The manna was given as breadcrumbs, small bits of bread that led the Israelites in their journey to further their faith and trust in God. The portions of bread which were fed to the crowds miraculously were also directing them in having close encounters with Jesus that not only fed their stomachs, but nurtured their faith. In both instances, those who were weak in faith complained and argued because they allowed the carnality of their bodies to control the fragility of their faith. The portions of bread were foreshadowing Jesus, who was the bread to come. Already knowing from the Father what was to transpire, Jesus is not surprised nor distressed when many of those who professed to be his followers decided to turn away. I often comment to people that Jesus did not chase after people nor compel them to be his disciples. He simply made himself available, blessed each person who'd receive and ministered and taught those who would believe. Jesus committed to teaching the scriptures to the disciples so that they would have the foundational knowledge to couple with their experiences to develop a framework for understanding the transformation they were undergoing. In the course of our modern context, it takes scripture, tradition, experience, and reason to develop a multi-dimensional understanding of how both the Old and New Testament play vital roles in our Christian discipleship. There are so many breadcrumbs throughout scripture that lead us to our journey to discover Jesus Christ. When Jesus says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven, whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Jesus is proclaiming that God sent him as the sustainer and provider from heaven, that he will be the one to give eternal life to those who would receive it. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, bread of heaven, let those who claim that they are your followers recognize who you are in relationship to our Father in heaven. Let us examine ourselves to see if we indeed know you in a deep and personal way. We believe that you have come to save us and we repent of our sin, asking you to come into our hearts that we might be partakers of eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us receive this blessing, this benediction. 
having been filled by the bread of life, Jesus Christ, go forth into this world where hunger and thirst persist. Bring the healing, life-sustaining, nourishing word of God and the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Offer the transforming witness of the Holy Spirit to all you meet. Go in peace and may God's peace always be with you. Amen. Amen. And let us respond to the benediction with the singing of Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, verses one and four. Catherine. Catherine, you're muted. All right, let us sing together. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. When we asunder part, it gives us an inward pain, but we shall still be joined in our heart and hope to meet again. Amen. Thank you and have a blessed week. We invite you all to stay after the service to talk about uh, the, this week's message or other concerns that you might have, but go in peace. Amen. Amen. <laughs>